And welcome, everybody, to another episode of Finns Nation. I'm your host, Louis Song, and I am joined by the Extra Yard host, Alex Dono, and I am very excited to have him here. Dono, it's been, oh, and it hasn't been that long, actually. It hasn't been that long. We're trying to, we're trying to revamp. We're trying to revamp and get, uh, get ourselves back on talking again. Hey, and listen, we, I think we all kind of figured at some point the Dolphins would lose a game, probably weren't going to be going 20 and 0 this year. So mm-hmm. uh, we can, we can mix it up with a little adversity, Lewis, because you know, the last, and, and thank you so much for mentioning the extra yard. Uh, I host that weekly with Troy Stratford. We're going to be on uh, today at 3 PM live on the five reasons YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And we've been spoiled Lewis, as you have as well on Finns nation and pulse of Finns nation talking about wins, talking about 70 points, talking about crazy yardage being put up. Talking about the Dolphins. The best the, team in the NFL. The, yeah, best yep. team in the NFL. That's what I, I was. I The whole point of my previous Pulse of Fins Nation, which, well, the previous one before last night's, was that the entire concept was that Dolphins fans were afraid to be happy. They were afraid to be excited about this team because we were just, we were just waiting for the other boot to drop. And against Buffalo, I guess it finally dropped. But here's the thing that I have about it, and I will go into the details in just a moment. But before we do that really quick, just have to mention, as always, this show is brought to you by our good friends over at prizepicks.com. Prizepicks.com is a revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. They give you free squares, special Doco Tuesday promos, Flex Friday specials where you can get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you can normally win with offers like that. That, it's hard to justify not signing up if you're any kind of a fantasy sports fan. So use the promo code five, that's F I V E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Again, this promo code five, F I V E, go to prizepicks.com, deposit your $100, and let prize picks give you 100 of their dollars for you to play with and get started winning today. Okay, so let's get right into it. The thing that has been bothering me ever since the loss against the Buffalo Bills is that. Number one, there's a bunch of people who are suddenly turning on Miami, acting like the Dolphins are suddenly a terrible football team. I don't know if you saw the uh, the Kyle Brandt rant on Good Morning Football. Oh, I Monday. heard about it. I haven't watched it yeah, yet. He, he, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch that soon. But in an, uh, just to uh, spoilers, in a nutshell, basically he's gone and said that, oh, the Dolphins were acting like they were the next big thing. Uh, first of all, no, the Dolphins did not say anything about that right you and your colleagues were saying and admittedly dolphins fans we were saying yeah we're the next big thing we're very excited but as for the dolphins themselves they wouldn't claim to be anything that's point number one and point number two just because buffalo beat us and i'll admit it was a shellacking it was it really was it was awful it was terrible and i think the fact that once again teron armstead went down he's not gonna be back for a while connor williams was not there and liam eichenberg was acting as the center that really slowed down the offense to some degree because when your defensive tackles can just beat liam eichenberg like a drum and get in there and make it so that Tua actually has to look through his reads the first read offense that that the dolphins love to run it's like get your get the ball out with less than two seconds that's a brilliant strategy if the other team does not know who the first read is to begin with, which it seems like Buffalo knew the entire time somehow. I don't know how, but he, they did. And so once that happens, now to actually have to scan the field. But in order to scan the field, what do you need? Time to time. do so. Like, I don't like all this talk about Tua's incredible processing speed. It's still true. It's just that he needs more than two seconds to look around at the field and know where his second, third, fourth reads are. Like you can't, you, nobody's that fast. Not even Tom Brady's that fast. You have to be able to actually look at the field that you're playing on before you can make a decision besides the guy that you were already hoping you could throw the ball to. So that's what my thoughts are on the offense. But uh, the defense, that's where I've been upset, Donald. This is what I've been talking about for the past few days now. Is like, I am looking at Vic Fangio and I'm, and honestly, I'm holding his feet to the fire because it's like, you are supposed to be the godfather of defense. You are the guy that created the scheme that everybody wants to copy. You're the guy who you're supposed to be the one who everybody copies. And yet somehow this defense, and I, maybe this is, maybe this is blasphemous for me to say, I'll let you have your opinion on it. But I feel like that this team right now, this defense looked better with Josh Boyer running the defense and just blitzing every other down. That's what it feels like to me because it's like every time we face a good offense so far this season. So admittedly only twice that you can say that, but still the chargers, 
went up over 30 on over 30 points. Buffalo almost hit 50. And so yeah. that's my biggest concern. So I don't know. Maybe you I don't know how you feel about it, but it kind of feels like to me as of right now in a vacuum based on what I've seen from the defense, I would honestly say bring back Josh Boyer. I, I, I t- can I change my mind? There's a lot of people out there who have really started counting Stephen Ross's money again, specifically the money that he pays Vic Fangio annually. Okay, because you know Lewis, I was uh, I was hosting um, Game Day Uncensored post game on 560 WQAM for three and a half hours after that debacle. Believe me, there there are other things that I I was wanting to do with that time. After a win, it's great. After a loss, it's not a lot of fun. And most of the calls, well, we actually got a lot of calls from Bills fans, which just rubbed salt in the wounds. They found us. Uh, But most of the calls and the comments that we were getting from Dolphin fans were literally asking me, how much are we paying this guy? And I think it's four and a half million per season. Vic Fangio is is being paid to coordinate this defense. Um, I think that The biggest thing, and I know I'm like the thousandth person to say this over the last couple of days, but the biggest thing that just puzzled me and puzzled everyone out there was, you know, insisting on Cater Kohu on Stefan Diggs that you can't, you can't, you know, demand or at least allow Xavier Howard to shadow Diggs around the field because Kohu was getting cooked and burnt all over the field by Stefan Diggs. And listen, I I get it like for, for Cater himself. Um, you know, he's really a natural nickel and that specific assignment on Stefan Diggs, he's not really suited for it, which is why I feel it's up to the defensive coordinator to make adjustments, right? That you have to be able to adapt to your personnel. And I know you didn't have the Jalen's right. I mean, obviously we haven't seen, uh, Jalen Ramsey play yet this year. You would figure the defense is going to get better if, and when he's able to make his Miami Dolphins debut, probably around Thanksgiving, you didn't have Jalen Phillips, who makes that defensive line a lot more effective. Um, uh, I I don't know. I guess I kind of feel bad for Christian Wilkins right now, who's gambling on himself. And so far, he's not exactly helped his cause in you know getting a, a big time contract this next off season. But you know, some of that has got to be on the coordinator, who is really has really made a living wherever he's been, top ten if not better defenses left and right for making it work with the personnel. Now. Um, I, I have too many terrible memories and nightmares about, uh, about the Josh Boyer era to go quite as far as you did and to actually wish for his return. I'm not going to go quite that well, far. I'm, let me be but- clear. I'm not saying that I, let me, I, I, I'm, I've thought about it. I've had these inklings. I'm not saying, oh yeah, Josh Boyer is <laughs> definitely better, but it, yeah, but just yeah. based on what we've remembered, what we've seen, cause Josh Boyer for a time, at least that defense was the talk of the NFL. Just blitz yeah. the crap out of whoever the quarterback is, and they don't know what to do with themselves. So at least for a little while, it worked. So far yeah. with Vic Fangio, it hasn't worked at all. Not yeah. not, not at all. So. And so and so all I'm going to say on that front with Fangio is, you know, we're we're four games in, uh, only one loss in, and I know that. There were puzzling things on defense, even in the games that the Dolphins were winning. But you know what? We tabled those conversations because when the team is 3-0, and you can only complain so much, okay? Now, the issues get magnified when you, you know, let an opponent put up 48 points on you like the Dolphins did this past week. But I still... Um, you know, four games through a 17 game regular season. I'm I'm going to I'm going to let this Fangio thing marinate for a few more weeks and see what kind of adjustments he makes. He he looks very chill up there in that booth, though, when he's called. Like, I'm like, you know, show a little more passion, Fangs. Like, show us a little bit. Show a little show more. Uh, be, be more like. Maybe, yeah, be more like Ken Dorsey in that in that opposing offensive coordinator booth who, you know, gets all crazy well, maybe, and, maybe, and maybe animated. Not much. Maybe not that much. Let, let's, <laughs> uh, let's at least have some dignity. <laughs> yeah. And can I just big, big picture? Because this this applies to the offense as well. Actually, it applies a lot to the offense. And I, I love when the Dolphins offense is able to give to uh, just a little bit of time. It's probably the most fun offense I've watched in my entire life watching NFL football. And I'm, I'm getting a little older. I uh, had a, had my 39th birthday a couple weeks ago. So I'm, I'm getting up there now in years. Um, but I, you know, and, and obviously I'm not going to say it's the reason why you lost the game because it's not, but you definitely saw the complexion of the game change pretty severely when Teron Armstead came out and, you know, Liam Eikenberg at starting center is was was and is a problem to begin with. All right. But, you know, on both sides of the football, the Buffalo Bills, like 
that's a football team. They're so physical. I mean, from when uh, who was it? Uh, Dawson Knox when he stiff armed oh, Javon yeah, he Holland just, into he another just, dimension. Like, Get out of here, boy! You bother me. Yeah, like like it, it was that kind of stuff. Like the Bills were just so much more physical. And listen, like Tony Romo probably brought it up like ten more times than he had to. But talking about how you know their short yardage power running game is a lot more effective than it's been in recent years, and you know that that that's the kind of stuff that helps you win in the playoffs, right? So Buffalo, you know the the Dolphins uh, on offense, it's a beautiful thing when your quarterback has a few seconds to throw all the motion, all the timing, all the quick decision-making, the accuracy. But the problem is, if you allow the opposing line of scrimmage to disrupt that rhythm and just punch you in the mouth, that rhythm just, it goes to hell. And the entire offense just goes to hell, which is what we saw. So I just look at man-to-man, the Buffalo Bills are, are just, they're a better football team than us right now. You know, when the Dolphins can give their quarterback some time and some rhythm, because Miami's offense is very much predicated on rhythm, it's a deadly pinpoint accurate offense. But when it just becomes a football game and you're lining up against the Jimmys and Joes, the Dolphins are a pretty good team, but they're not as good as the Bills right now. The Bills were more physical and they earned that win. Yeah, I, I can't take it away from them. I can't act like, oh, the Dolphins just suck now. I can't do that. I, I, I can't go that far yeah. because when you have an offense that is potentially prolific as theirs you can't you can't ignore them you can't act like oh this team is just a fraud it's the worst team in the nfl it's not i i don't want to go like talking about frauds i i know that there are some folks out there low the dolphins are they're fraudulent they're not real it's it's all a it was all fake well that's the case and you have to say the charges are fraudulent too because we beat them so and i don't think anybody's going to go that far because justin herbert's still the blonde haired blue-eyed golden boy of the nfl but never mind that my main point here when it comes to this is that if the Dolphins want to be a playoff team, a Super Bowl contending team, I don't know what the answer to the question is other than to just like give these guys some growth hormones or something because that's what it just looked like to me on Sunday. Yeah. The Buffalo Bills are bigger and stronger than the Dolphins, and right. they just dunked them in the toilet and did them a swirly. It's like, no, you think you're so tough. You're not. You went to the gym for a couple of weeks. That doesn't mean anything to us. So that was my biggest concern is like, okay, so what's going to happen when the Dolphins face another team that prides themselves on just raw, pure physicality? Are they going to be, right. are they going to get beat down the same way they did against Buffalo? I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to beat that. If that makes sense. Like what is the strategy that you use to stop a team from just bullying you to like, how is it just the, cause is this a question? Cause we beat them at home in Miami yeah. last year. And you, yeah, can, you yeah. can say that they were exhausted. They were dehydrated. It was the sun. Uh, you can do that. The Dolphins were hot, too. It's fine. But yeah, somehow they managed to beat them at the last second, granted, but they still beat them. And so if that's what it is, that what it is, that all it is, is just the home field advantage. I didn't see any aqua and orange in that stand at all whatsoever. It was like all Buffalo fans, all Buffalo Bills fans, not a single Dolphin to be found. If Or at least the cameras didn't show that if there were any. So I, I think I think if you if you field the version of the Dolphins offensive line that we saw this past Sunday, you play Buffalo ten times, they're winning nine or ten of those. That that that's just the reality to me. Um I you know, for for me it's like it's hard to scheme around that when you're going up against, you know, the the big the big eaters on Buffalo's front. And you know, it's it's like it's always because obviously, as you can you can see, I'm a big uh, Miami Hurricanes fan. So it gets annoying when I have to watch Ken Dorsey celebrate, and you know when I have to watch my guy Greg Russo just collecting sack after sack after sack. And it's like normally I like to cheer for these guys to do well, but I can't because they're Bills and they're going up against my team. So it's a it's a very painful, conflicting thing. So. Um, Listen, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, and obviously, uh, you know, Tua Tua could have been better. Um, you know, he, he and, and listen, Josh Allen also played even by his standards a better than usual game. Quite literally a perfect game if you ask the passer. It was rating. a perfect game. I mean, yeah, that's right. I mean, only had four incompletions on the day, no interceptions, had the rushing touchdown to go along with all the passing touchdowns that he threw, but you know, a lot of that is on the Dolphins defense just not giving him a hard enough time, but why, you know, he's just such a player. And I think after you, after they lost to the Jets week one and he didn't play very well, people are like, oh, the, the, the Allen era is over. This guy's not any good anymore. He's still one of the very best in the NFL. He's still going to be in the MVP conversation for the next several years because he's just, you know, 
Uh, obviously, he and Tua are very different quarterbacks. But if you look at what Josh does so well, you know, the way he's able to not only pick up yardage with his legs, but buy time and extend plays and elude sacks and break out of sacks because he's so big and so strong. And then his arm strength is just otherworldly. Like the way he can complete passes across his body on the move under pressure. It's just, you know, very, I don't know if anyone in the league does it better than he does, quite frankly, but very, very few quarterbacks come around with that unique of a skill set. So he's just, it's a very different type of quarterback and he fits their offense so well, the way Tua Tungo Vailoa fits Miami's offense so well. But, you know, if you feel that version of the Dolphins, especially when you've got a defensive court, so on defense, you need to make more adjustments. Allow your best corner, who's one of the top paid in the league, to shadow the top receiver who's cooking Cater Kohu. You have to make that adjustment. I do think you probably should or could have blitzed more. But then on offense, I don't know. With the Dolphins personnel, if you're without Teron Armstead, who, yeah, like you said, is definitely going to miss some time. We'll see how much. And, you know, without Connor Williams, which means you have to take one of your other quote unquote starters, Liam, Liam Eikenberg, and plug him into center where he's clearly not very good. You're down two starters on that line. It's an absolute nightmare. You're just not going to beat a team like that, especially not in their stadium with that version of your offensive line. You're too physically outmatched. Yeah, it's it's this is what the Dolphins are dealing with right now is that they're not physical enough. The defensive court, I, I the, that quote bothered me so much when I saw it from Xavier Howard saying, I wanted to cover Stefan Diggs. Yep. So, who overrode right. you? Who right. overruled you? It was Fangio who said, No, it's going to be Cater Kohu. And even after what we've seen, after Stefan Diggs had already scored two touchdowns, we're still going to go ahead and we're going to keep using Cater Kohu. Okay, sure, let him score another touchdown. What the hey, why not? Like, no help. Everybody looks confused. And that is on Vic Fangio, and that's why I get upset. Like I, I, it's kind of coming to light now to me when he says that I don't want to watch film from the previous time. Like you don't want to watch film on your players. Hello, mm. you have to know who you have to that's know weird. who. You're, remember, do you remember that quote when he said that he yeah. wasn't going to watch? Yeah, I film? do now. Now that you bring it up, I remember like, that. Why yeah. are you not going to watch film on these players and learn who it is you have at your disposal? That doesn't make any sense to me. So what? We're just starting from scratch. Everybody is a clean slate. You're going to try to mold them into what it is that you're looking for. Like, hello, you have to know yeah. who you have before you make a right. defense for right. them. It's it's a it's a very weird deck. It's a very weird contrast if you think about it. Because Mike McDaniel makes his offense based on who he has at his disposal. He's got Tyreek Hill. He's got Jalen Waddle. He's got a track team. Obviously, he wants some kind of a deep an offense, but he still has to go with who he has. So he bases it on Devon H. On. He, he, he bases it on Tyreek Hill. He bases it on Jalen Waddle, And he makes the offense suited to what it is that they do best. Whereas Vic Fangio, it almost looks like this is my defense and y'all are going to fit wherever I tell you to fit. Yeah, and I hate that. And, I, uh, and th 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 that's one of the things that it bothers me most about coaching. And again, like I hopefully Fangs can adapt to this over the next few weeks and figure out his roster, like you said. But that concept, that has always bothered me. Like when these old school coaches come in and they they want players to adapt to their scheme instead of adapting the scheme to the players or at least adapting. Even if you don't adapt the scheme, just adapt who you've got lined up where, okay? Like some adaptation needs to take place. And there's clearly there's clearly not enough of that right now. And listen, I'm sure with with Fangio's philosophy of if he's really not going back and watching film on guys, uh, I like you, I think that's a mistake. Then you would have at least hoped that, you know, all the time you had mini camp to training camp preseason that at a certain point you have a better idea of what you have. Um, you know, there if I if I can give out props to really probably the only two Dolphins that I thought played really well uh, this past Sunday, Andrew Van Ginkle on mm -hmm. defense. That, that that seems to be one guy who is thriving in the, uh, in the Fangio system. And here's and the I funny thing. Fangio, here's the funny yeah. thing, Dono. He's the only one that we heard a report from Jason Sarney that basically said, listen, I want you to come back to Miami. I have plans for you. So right. apparently he watched film on somebody because yeah. – he liked Van Ginkle enough to tell him, I want you to sign back with Miami. And he did. Yep. And it's working. Van Ginkle's going to get paid after this season. Yeah. Not by Miami. Yeah. He's going to get paid by somebody. Right. So it's Van Ginkle on defense. And then again, Devon Achan had a really good game on offense. And it, it looks like we have something there. Mm -hmm. Right. And 
And hey, listen, the last time you and me spoke, we were talking about Jonathan Taylor. And, uh, you know, I, I want I'm hoping you deleted that episode because <laughs> I, I said I, I said a lot of things about how much I thought the Dolphins needed him. And, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I there are things that they need on offense. I don't think uh, running back is necessarily one of those things that they need right now. And A-Chan is doing fantastic. Yeah, I, I from the Jonathan Taylor aspect of it, again, my whole point was I didn't want to give up assets for him. I That's why yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, Dalvin Cook, he's a freebie. This, I give him a couple of money and then he's good to go. But as far as trading, mm-mm. Like I keep hearing over and over again, Devon Achan's going to be special. Devon Achan's going to be the running back of the future. Okay, so if you believe all that, you don't need Jonathan Taylor, right? Because that's going to be a three-year investment at least. So don't need to rush that. But in any case, Dolphins have an opportunity now. They're going to be back at home in Hard Rock. Hopefully the fan base is not too scorned by what we just witnessed. And they're facing the Giants and the Giants are bad. Like they are a bad they're team. Really bad. Like this is a team that I'd look at just like the Broncos, where I look at and say, if you are a good football team, you will absolutely toast these guys. And so that's what I'm looking for now is that the Dolphins can bounce back. If they can go back to being the, the team that we hoped they would be, if they can score at least 30 points on the New York Giants, then I will be like, okay, I get it. Buffalo's a tough team. Any given Sunday, blah, 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 all that nonsense. But there are certain expectations that I still have for this team, and one of them is to beat bad football teams. They have two of them coming up, the Giants and the Panthers, and they are both going to be at Hard Rock Stadium. Dolphins need to win both of those games. Otherwise, I'm going to be kind of pissed off. Yeah, like you said, uh, the silver lining here is, and I guess it's not technically silver lining unless you actually do it, but um, for as bad as they played against Buffalo, the Dolphins probably should be five and one in a couple weeks uh, before you have. Uh, I, I know they have a really I can't remember who the really, really tough game after that. Uh, I don't right know why that real quick. Yeah, oh, I, I don't know why that is the Eagles. Me. That's right. The <laughs> Eagles in Philly. Right. So you, you could be Danny's you could be Eagles. five and one before you're five and two. OK, so at least f- five and five and one would be really nice. Uh, and uh, I, I've already looked at the spread, Lewis. I haven't haven't placed a wager yet, but the uh, the Dolphins are ten and a half point favorites at home against the Giants. That that's a big NFL spread. That's that's like a you know more common college football type of spread. Ten and a half points you're giving at home. Giants can't block anybody. Um, Andrew Van Ginkle might have four sacks this Sunday. Uh, Christian Wilkins might even get a sack, and he'll see those dollar signs going through his head if something like that plays out. So th- this should be a get-right type of Sunday. And like you said, man, if it's not, if it's not, I'm going to start to really worry about this team and mainly their mentality, right? Because if the Dolphins can't beat the stinking Giants at home this weekend, I'm going to start and look to this team and say, okay, we already had our question marks on the defense. We already had our question marks about the team physicality. Do I also need to question their mentality, right? Are they going to allow um, a really poor showing in Buffalo to get in their heads and carry over and cause a hangover? So, no, that that's why they need to bounce back and win this game. And I don't care if they cover the spread or not. I don't care if they win by – one point, or I mean, I prefer they win by you no, know. No, 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 no. I, 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 I need them to cover a spread. I, I you want style I, points? I need, All right. I need style All right. points against the Giants, right. Dono. Yes, yeah, I, you probably against should. the Giants. Yeah. I, I expect yeah. a win of at least 10, 15 points. Okay, okay. Like I, I can't, I, I can't. This is the same thing. I said this many years ago, many years ago, and I got roasted alive for it because the Dolphins won that game. They Brian Fitzpatrick lost the game for the Jets. They he blew it for them and. I was looking at it and I was saying I would rather have uh, – actually, I'm trying to remember now. I don't know if the Jets won that game by, like, a point or if the Dolphins um, – God, mm. I can't remember now. I can't remember. It's like it, it was in my head but I because I remember saying it, but now I can't remember the details of it. But my main point was, and I had this argument with some other folks, was that I would rather the Dol- the Jet the Dolphins didn't oh now I now I remember the Dolphins didn't win the Jets lost that was my that was oh, that was my argument yeah. the Dolphins did yeah. not win that game the Jets lost that game because they blew it and I was looking at it from the perspective of everybody was like oh it's a win is a win who cares it's the NFL it's like no if you are supposed to be a good football team you beat the ever living crap out of bad football teams and we thought the jets were bad and so if we're looking at these jets and saying that the dolphins won and it was lucky and it was good it was because a win is a win i don't care about that man you ever see the kansas city chiefs barely squeaking by the chicago bears it's not happening man the kansas city chiefs toast anybody who's not on their level 
So that's that's the kind of team that I'm looking at if you're looking at winning a Super Bowl. You can't get squeak by bad football teams. You should be and and I'm going to look at you and say why didn't you beat them harder if it's a game if it's a game like that. The Giants at least 10 15 point win. Otherwise I'm going to be like what happened? What went wrong because you have no business had it cutting it that close against a team that can barely move the football. Yeah, I'm with you. I hope hopefully hopefully we get that this weekend. All right. So uh, thank you, Dono, for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, Extra Yard going to be happening today, this afternoon on the Five Reasons Sports Network YouTube channel. You and Troy Stratford, you have an idea of uh, what questions you're going to ask him? Because I yeah. think I think Troy was thinking the Dolphins were finally going to beat the Bills. And it, <laughs> yeah. And no. Yeah, and, and I know that um, obviously Troy, he's an offensive guy, so there's a lot we can get into. But I would also love his take on on Fangio and that defense because I one thing I know about Troy is, and, and listen, obviously he's a former professional football player. So even if he played on one side of the ball, I'm sure he knows a lot more on the other side of the ball than I do. But I'm also sure Troy, who is friends with so many of his former Dolphin teammates and Dolphin alumni, he's probably had some conversations with folks who played on that side of the football in, you know, the glory days, and and they've had a chat with what didn't go right there. So I'm curious for Troy's perspective on it. And he's always, uh, he's a level-headed guy. You know, it's one one of uh, 17 regular season games, so he's not going to overreact to it the way that I sometimes do. But uh, I'd, I'd love his take on all the things that didn't go well and how we fix them, if we can fix them. Yeah, I can definitely see where you're coming from there. Listen, I know Troy has probably talked with maybe Big Troy. He's probably talked with, uh, maybe he's talked with Patrick Sertan. Heck, you want to talk about alumni, Sam Madison. Sam Madison's on the team as the coaching staff. He's probably, Troy's probably talking to Sam and being like, because remember, they were on the Finsider together. It's the, the Finsiders. I remember, the, I still remember the radio clip. But it's like, he was on there with him. I'm sure that Troy's texting Sam and be like, what the heck just happened out there, man? And Sam's going to be like, oh, I don't know what happened. Like, poor Cater got wrecked. And I, I feel bad for him. I really do. It's like, what business yeah. does Cater Kohu have? A second-year player out of Texas A&M Commerce, which I did not know existed up until Kohu was on the Dolphins, covering one of the best route runners in the NFL. Like, I, I just don't get that matchup. So that's another thing Fangio has to answer for. So everybody, once again, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the extra yard with Alex Dono and Troy Stratford. Make sure you're tuned in for that. And for those of you who have not already done so, make sure that you're going to pricepix.com. Use that promo code five. That's F I B E. And they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up, which means again, you put in a hundred dollars. They give you a hundred dollars when you sign up using that promo code. So go in there, get started winning today. Dono, thank you for joining me. I appreciate having you on as always. My pleasure, Lewis. Thanks for having me. All right. And we'll see you all next Friday for another episode of Finns nation.